All right. Um, yes, I'm in a new office. Yes, I have a farmer's tan. We're gonna ignore both of those things for the duration of this video, all right? All right, good. Glad we're on the same page. As per usual, drink break. Do it off screen. Stare at my farmer's tan I just told you to ignore. Okay, let's get started. The topic of today's video is going to be all about how to survive a month long drawing challenge. If you are new to the art community or if you're new to illustration or it's something that you want to do in your free time and you have no idea what a drawing challenge is, there are a ton of different type of drawing challenges. The one that we're going to be talking about today is creating a large body of work in a condensed period of time. So. For Dolltober, which is my drawing challenge that I have made for 2020 this year, it's going to start October 1st and it's going to end on October 31st. The way that this drawing challenge is going to work is you're gonna get a new prompt every single day in October and you're gonna create an illustration based off of the prompt for that day. And you're gonna do that for 31 days until the end of the month. Some of you that may not be familiar with what a drawing challenge is, you're probably sitting there like, what is a prompt? I have no idea what you're talking about. Basically, a prompt is essentially the underlying theme of that illustration for that day. So for example, one of my illustrations, the prompt for that day is siren. So draw something related to a siren for that day. Whenever you are planning on participating in somebody's drawing challenge or creating your own, you will want to have the overlying official list with who made it and your hashtags that you will be using and you want other people who are going to participate in your list are going to be using as well. So for me and my list, I have Dolltober2020 at the top. I have my name and my Instagram handle at the bottom, and then I have the two hashtags that I want people to use for Dolltober, and they are hashtag Dolltober2020 and hashtag Kenzie's Dolltober2020. And you don't put the apostrophe in Kenzie's because hashtags. If you can find my official prompt list on my Instagram, I'll leave my Instagram handle in the video on screen right now, and I'll also leave it in the description box below. All right, let's talk about how to approach any drawing challenge regardless of your skill set. Let's think about whenever you're picking which drawing challenge or which list you want to go with if you want to participate in one. Think about what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what do you want to work on, and what skill do you want to build over the course of the challenge. For example, me, I know that I want to work on balancing out my drawings, I want to work on details, and I want to work on human anatomy. So those are the three concepts that I am going to be working on and incorporating within my illustrations. Let's talk about skill set. I've had people who want to participate in my list, but they're scared that they're not very good at drawing human anatomy or dolls. My list is called Dolltober. And I said, there are a multitude of ways that you can go about approaching this. You can go about it in a very straightforward way. You can work on drawing dolls. You can go about it in a lettering way and just write out and practice your typography with each day's prompt word. You can literally just write it out. So you can also choose to kind of design the outfits. And I don't know if anyone else remembers like the 2D cutout outfits that they used to make for dolls and figures. You can do something along those lines for my list. You can look at it as an aspect of like, okay, what would the room 
like a dollhouse room for a siren look like and you can brainstorm that and work on work on drawing scenery and backgrounds and those aren't all the ways that you can approach this but those are just some of the few ways that you can kind of match your skill set for what you think you can achieve and what you would be interested in doing over the course of a month every day. Now let's start to talk about our materials and supplies. You don't need the most expensive materials to do this. The only thing that you need to answer for yourself before you're buying your supplies for the month is what skill do I want to work on? What tools are going to help me build that specific skill? I'm gonna go through really fast and tell you guys all of the materials and supplies that I'm gonna be using for this month's challenge. So the first is actually gonna be my medium, and this is what I'm using. It's gonna be, all of my pieces are gonna be monochromatic, so this is the only color that I'm gonna need. It's Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay Red India Ink. So you can mix this with water and create a lighter shade or a darker shade, etc. So, then I'm going to have my liner, which is just a red Sharpie liner. I use the black Sharpie liners in a lot of my other traditional work and I find that they are the best at not bleeding whenever I'm overlaying other colors and stuff to them. Then I'm also going to be using my Jelly Roll pens and these are all just white to add the highlights to my illustration. I have them in three sizes. I have them in five, eight, and ten. Then the three brushes that I'm gonna be using are going to be from Artist Loft and Winsor & Newton. I have two Artist Loft paint brushes. They're just round brushes in sizes one and four. And then the Winsor & Newton round brush is in a size two. Next, what I'm gonna have is just a paint palette, an old paint palette, and then something that I'm gonna keep my dirty water in. And then I'm also gonna have a mason jar where my clean water will be. And then also paper towels. Use, get paper towels, use them. Okay, so that is pretty much my utensil supplies, like pens, brushes, and stuff like that. Let's talk about paper that I'm gonna be using for this challenge. I still haven't decided which one I'm going to use, but um, I'm using, I'm going to either use the Strathmore mixed media paper from their sketchbook like this, where it's very easy to rip out each page. This is a six by eight inch book. And then I also have an actual sketchbook. And this is by Strathmore and this is a mixed media paper sketchbook. So all of the pages are pretty thick so it should be safe to use for India ink and not have any bleed through. But if you're gonna be using a sketchbook, I would suggest getting a thick piece of cardstock or other paper to put between your pages when working through, especially if you're not confident on whether or not you're gonna have bleeding. Yeah, that is it. That's all I am using for the challenge this month. I did write down five tips. So tip number one is pre-plan your illustrations as much as possible. So to pre-plan an illustration, you want to be creating thumbnails and sketches prior to the day. You can pre-plan as far in advance as you want. I am currently, I think, I've completed 10 of the 31 sketches that I'm going to be working on next month. This is still, we're in mid-September and I'm working out and planning all of my sketches. So for the month of October, I have more time to focus on honing my skill and techniques. So for me, I know that the planning process eats up the majority of the time that I want to spend on each piece. I would guesstimate that probably 70% of the time I spend on an illustration is spent in the planning and sketching phases. Now, the next 20% is me 
working on the illustration and hating the illustration. And then the last 10% of me working on the illustration is happiness. And I'm like, yes, this is the best thing that I've ever created. Let me tell you guys why it's so important to pre-plan. Because in years past, I didn't plan. I didn't think about the next day's prompt until that day. And as I said before, the planning process is the most time consuming for me. So that meant that every day I was spending the majority of my time planning the illustration. And then by the time I got done planning, I would look at the clock and I would say, I don't have time to work on this anymore. And in turn, I would blitz through the illustration. I wouldn't take my time to focus on the skills that I wanted to work on. And the illustration would be something that I hated. And then I would repeat this process over and over again. It caused the infamous burnout, which is something you don't want to encounter whenever you are in the middle of a month long drawing challenge. We're going to talk about the differences between a thumbnail and a sketch. So a thumbnail is pretty generic. You can work out the general shape and lay out the colors where you think you want them to go. Your thumbnails are also going to give you a general idea of the type of reference photos that you either need to be taking yourself or that you need to be looking for on the internet. Now, a sketch is different from a thumbnail in the sense of your sketch is going to have more refined line work from the thumbnail. It's going to have more detail and you're going to start fine tuning your proportions for your piece. Let's talk about tip number two. So tip number two, I think I've said it before, we want to restrict our supplies. And this isn't meaning like this is the only supplies that you'll ever need to create a masterpiece. No, we want to restrict our supplies Whenever it comes to a drawing challenge that's over a time period of a month or more because you're going to be creating a new piece every day and you don't realistically, you're not going to have time to spend six plus hours creating a masterpiece every single day. So by restricting our supplies and limiting, say, our color palette or the tools or the mediums that we are using, we are also going to be making it easier for us whenever we are working within a time constraint that's realistic to making a new illustration every single day for a month. Figure out the materials that are going to work for you that you can afford and are at your disposal to start working on the skill that you want to work on. And also get the supplies that are fun. Like you don't have to be like, oh, well, I have to work on this. I am really bad at this. No, you can literally pick your supplies based on something that like, I have never worked with watercolors, but they look really beautiful, but I am just, I, I don't know. I have never tried them, but I want to try them. If you're interested in trying a new medium because you want to try it, then pick that medium. Now you don't have to go out and buy a whole 15, like, or a 16 pan palette of watercolors. You can pick three to five colors. You can even pick just one color with watercolors and use that color to practice with. Okay, so using the same materials consistently over the course of a month will also make your pieces look like a cohesive body of work and it will make the growth that you have been working on and achieved over the month a lot more noticeable. So again, just a couple of ways that you can limit your supplies are by restricting your color palette and by restricting the medium that you're using or restricting the tools that you are using. So let's say even if you want to approach this digitally, you can say, okay, well, I'm going to approach this digitally, but I'm going to only use these five brushes in Procreate to complete this challenge. Tip number three is going to be pretty short. Tip number three is basically just don't be afraid to use references. Don't be afraid to be your own reference. Ask your friends, ask your family to pose for you if you need to. If you're going to be doing anatomy or figures, if you're going to be doing clothing or working on that, go and see photos, go look at photos and see how clothing falls off of the body, see how it moves, how it flows, if, there, if there's wind, 
looking at a reference photo, the difference in a reference photo and pulling the information from your mind are two totally different things. And I highly encourage looking at reference photos. With that being said, there, there is a very strong difference between using a reference photo as just that, as a reference and copying a reference photo or tracing a reference photo. Copying a reference photo verbatim, like you're not changing anything in your reference photo and tracing the reference photo are huge no's. We don't do that, especially whenever it involves somebody else's body, somebody else's work. No, don't do that. So if you're gonna be using somebody's like bodily pose as a reference, you need to make sure that you are taking that as a reference and you are turning it into your own interpretation and it has to stand as your unique work. So, so basically nobody should be able to look at your work and say, hey, that kind of looks like this person or this person's fashion photography, like clothing line. It's, make sure that it's unique to you is what I'm saying. If you're copying somebody's work or if you're, if you're tracing somebody else's work, you're essentially not going to see any growth from, from the challenge. Tip number four is to set a time constraint. And this one is a big factor whenever it comes into, whenever it comes to burnout and avoiding burnout. We need to think about realistically how much time during each day am I going to be able to set aside to work on this drawing challenge and to build those skills that I want to build. Once you answer that question, whether it be 30 minutes, an hour, two hours plus, so you need to make sure that you're answering that truthfully and you're going to stick to that and honor that. If one prompt is frustrating to you, consider hyper focusing on just a single part of the original idea or design and like the, i think the prompt that i've been using as an example is siren so instead of drawing a full-blown siren you can literally just say hey today i'm a little overwhelmed i'm going to literally just draw the scale on the siren's tail and focus on detail and working out that and that can be your illustration for that day Bum, ba, da, da. So once you've figured out all of your supplies, attempt a baseline drawing with those new supplies just to see how long it takes you and where you're at with your current skill level. You might get faster later on in the month, but what you want to know initially is where am I at right now? How long does it take me to complete a piece now? And if it takes you longer than the time constraint that you set for yourself, then consider reeling in your ideas or minimizing your ideas for each prompt. So let's say if you tried to do a baseline drawing of a full body figure and make it a really full and elaborate piece, but it took you four hours to complete that, realistically think about, do I have four hours every day for the next 31 days to complete this drawing challenge? Probably not. Let's think about how we can take out some of that workload. One way you could take out the workload is instead of doing a full body illustration, you can do a top half of the body illustration. Another way to minimize the work is to just focus on the face, or as I said previously, instead of drawing an entire siren for a prompt, you could draw just a scale of what would be on the siren's tail. So if you know you're gonna have more time on some days and less time on others, then make sure that you're taking that into account whenever you're thumbnailing and sketching and you're still in the planning phase. So if I know that I'm only gonna have 30 minutes for one day, I'm going to maybe say, hey, I might make this piece of typography or a lettering style illustration for this day because that doesn't take me as, as long as it would for a full body and scenic background illustration. Tip number five is to acknowledge whenever you have burnout and take a break whenever you feel it coming on. 
Whether that mean that you take a break for a couple of hours and then do it at a different time or whether it means you just skip that day is completely up to you. But it is important to whenever you do feel like you are experiencing burnout to take that break and not deny that you're in burnout. So the whole goal for a drawing challenge is to work on a skill for yourself. It's not meant to make you feel frustrated or that you can't do it or that you're not good enough because realistically you're doing a lot of work and you're pushing yourself very hard in a very condensed period of time. And I know the whole premise of doing a month long drawing challenge is that is a very long period of time but you're doing something, creating 31 pieces of work in 31 days, that level of work in 31 days, that's a very short amount of time to create that much work. So in one way, we are looking at this as a marathon and not a sprint, but in other ways, we are looking at this as a time crunch. It's kind of like you have this massive project and not a lot of time to do it. But as marathon runners will do, they will train and practice and prep prior to the actual marathon. So in a way, that's what we're doing here. We are getting our resources together, we're pre-planning, we're thumbnailing and sketching, and we're making sure that we're gonna be set up for success and not failure. My camera is about to die, but I did want to say really quickly that I am going to be giving all of my patrons over on Patreon first dibs on all of my original Dolltober illustrations. So if you would like to get first dibs, whatever you want to call it, on any of my original Dolltober illustrations, then head over to the link to my Patreon and become a patron. You can do so for as little as a dollar a month and you can get access to all of my archived digital wallpapers for cell phones or you can choose a tier that has physical rewards such as stickers, postcards, prints as well. And we're also six dollars away from unlocking monthly studio vlogs where everyone will get to do uh, chats with me and look at all of my sketchbooks and do studio tours and other stuff like that. My patrons also get early access to my Big Cartel apparel shop. My patrons also get 20% off of all of my merchandise that I have in my Etsy shop as well. If that sounds like something that you would be interested in, then head over to the links below and visit my Instagram, Patreon, shop pages, the works. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know if you're gonna be following along with my Dolltober or if you're gonna be following along with somebody else's drawing challenge and who are you following? Who are you gonna be participating in? So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye. Bye. Oh, those were my notes. I've been exposed, you figured me out. Hi. Farmer's fan, all right. Bye.